Meghalaya Basin Development Authority MBDA is a pioneering initiative by the government of Meghalaya established with the vision to promote sustainable and inclusive development within the state formed with the objective of transforming the socio-economic landscape of Meghalaya MBDA plays a crucial role in addressing various developmental challenges including poverty environmental sustainability and resource management through its multifaceted approach the Meghalaya Basin Development Authority aims to create a resilient and prosperous Meghalaya where development is harmonious with the environment and benefits all sections of the society Meghalaya often referred to as a board of clouds has a bounty of lush landscapes and vibrant culture the other jewels in the crown are natural resources and hard working people but still development had been a challenge owing to geographical and many other factors but things have taken a turn for better with meghalaya basin development authority coming to the picture mbda has taken it upon itself to address management of natural resources in the state while addressing issues of livelihoods among the rural communities and that too using sustainable good practices in today's episode we will get to know more about the innovative planning and administrative model that mbda brings to the table to talk about all this we have with us mr ivan swear director meghalaya basin development authority welcome mr ivan it's so nice to have you here today with us thank you for this opportunity to share our experiences so sir i'll begin with you know asking you about the mbda itself like what were the aims and objectives with which this uh, authority was formed in 2011 you know we were a state that was growing and we found that we were a paradox of poverty amidst plenty we had an abundance of natural resources fertile soil good water good climate hard working people but overall we were very poor the people were very poor so what was the issue so we tend we started looking inside to what was the problem that was being faced with us so we realized that you know we had so many government departments and they were all working in silos we had we did not have an integrated framework for development we were basically executing and implementing government of india schemes as a flagship program these were schemes which had been successful elsewhere in the country and which has been given to us because of their success are they in the biggest states of haryana rajasthan maharashtra madhya pradesh or elsewhere that when we came back to our scheme we have implemented this scheme we realized that at the end of the project after everything has been going on for the five years of the project everything was very well but when the project ended things started going back to where they began so we started thinking whether we should come up with our own program at this point of time you know we were we were started talking about convergence how would convergence bring about a, a integrated growth for many things now we started talking also because we had a large number of young population a young population that was growing younger and was going restless at that point of time we were just at the threshold of a lot of militancy which has happened in the state and we were trying to look at ways and means how we could overcome these difficulties that we faced now even within this even within the state there was a lot of intra there was a lot of intra uh, intra variations in the opportunities that was happening in the state so what happened was we started thinking now what do we need to bring about this change so accordingly we decided that uh, the government will look at how to bring about this convergence how to bring about a change in the life goals because previously we were all looking at every person said as a beneficiary now that does a difference so we said let's not look at people as beneficiaries let us look at people as our partners that will help us change the approach so sir, so to, to, to be able the, to to be able to put things into perspective so let us first kind of you know list or you know explain the challenges that were there which were there you know preventing the development in northeast so let's you know, try to figure those out like what those challenges were yeah so uh, as as you are as you have correctly mentioned 
we are a state that has a high amount of natural resources. Unfortunately, because of transportation uh, bottlenecks, we are unable to connect with the rest of the country easily for, for the export of our products. Now, it was once said that prior to independence, we had a very high per capita income in the state of Meghalaya. That was a time when the border, the southern border was open. But after we got independence, when the borders were all shut down, we had to depend on the chicken's neck from north of uh, Assam and Bengal to sell a product. So that was the end. So that was what brought about a uh, 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 difficulty for us in exporting the products that are made from the state. So because of that, we will look at the problem. How do we? So we try to understand the integrated framework. We have to bring more integrated framework with effective convergence. Now, there was no mission mode in the amount of approach that we were doing previously. Now, the, most of the time we were working on the people here, were working, they were very people centric. We, we didn't have a process by which we could uh, encourage the growth of livelihood, the growth of entrepreneurship. Then we did not have strong institutional support. That was what we were lacking. You know? And people were dependent on the single livelihood. We understood that in order to overcome this, our people needed to have multiple livelihoods. And that also, if we are able to work, it bring them together in the clusters. Right now, people are working in individual villages far away from each other. Because of that, we are unable to have easy access to markets throughout the time. Now, because of these issues that we have faced, for we met farmers, we met growers, we met traders, we met a lot of people to understand what was the difficulty that we were facing. So we realized that we did not have whole chain interventions throughout our efforts. We were working totally in silos. Everybody was doing his separate thing, whether he was in the government, whether he was in the business, whether he was in any field. We were working individually and we were connecting with the outside forces. Now, here we needed to change. We needed to bring a change. So in order to bring about a change, we need to create people into entrepreneurs. We need to build up local enterprises and build strong market linkages. So in order to do this, the first step, the first step for us was we started building what was called the Integrated Basin Development and Livelihood Promotion Program. That was our state flagship program. And that flagship program, the IBDLP, which we call, that was built on four pillars. Now, these pillars were knowledge management. Knowledge management was where we were able to integrate the modern scientific and traditional knowledges to achieve greater efficiency in development. This was one way. There. Now, the second pillar was natural resource management. We are a state with huge uh, potential for natural resources. We get about 63 billion cubic meters of rainfall in a year. Now, but we are, we are able to use perhaps only about 5% of it. The rest flows off as uh, surface runoff and floods the plains of Assam and Bangladesh. Now, so we needed to take care of resources. We have excellent uh, examples like the sacred forest. Every village had a sacred forest by which they could take care of the springs and the water sources and the, all the flora and fauna. Then we had living root bridges. We have waterfalls, we have lakes, we have rivers. We have a lot of natural resources. And below the ground, we have a lot of minerals that happen in our state. So, but these are not being uh, ex uh, taken out scientifically. So there are a lot of damages that is happening to the environment while this thing is going on. So another thing was enterprise promotion. Now we needed to make people become entrepreneurs. We nobody can just depend on being a government employee or an employee in a, in a private firm. We need to be producers. Right now, the state of Meghalaya, the majority of people, we are all consumers. Then we need to be producers. So we to bring about that change, we need to encourage the spirit of entrepreneurship amongst them. For that, we have created certain institutions. And lastly, we have this, uh, we, we needed good governance. Meghalaya is a state that has multi-levels, uh, multi-level systems of governance. Right from the government of India, the state government, the autonomous district councils, then we have the local chiefs, the nokmas, and, and various levels till the village level. So all these have to work together in a very synchronized manner in which we would be able to make development and progress very smooth.
Right now, everybody is pulling in their own direction, which makes it very difficult for projects and programs to happen in a very smooth way. So because of this, we build up these four pillars, good governance, enterprise development, natural resource management, and knowledge. Based on these pillars, we were able to create the platform of MBDA. That, from that platform, we were able to attract a lot of investments. So, of course, you took a very right path, you know, uh, looking at the indigenous ways to solve uh, local issues, which is, I think, the right thing to do. So, sir, how has this enterprise development uh, been progressed in uh, your state through your initiatives and through your innovative, uh, you, you can say, management and planning? Uh, to do this, we started by uh, building institutions. We started building institutions. We built it for, for the enterprise, we started building the... Meghalaya Institute of Entrepreneurship. There, we were able to bring about a lot of changes by creating training programs, exposure visits. We created one very unique situation. We built this, uh, what we call enterprise facilitation centers. At every block level, in those in the 2000, when we started in 2011, 12, when we started uh, the basin program, we started the enterprise facility center at every block office. In this enterprise uh, facilitation center, we had young people who were just freshly out of college. They were trained to sit in these EFCs, which we call them, and uh, farmers, villagers are encouraged to visit these EFCs and have a direct one-to-one -one chat with the people. Once they had this chat, people, the uh, most of the uh, most of the rural people, folks who come there, who wish to take up various activities, it could be livestock management could be in the fishery sector, could be in the handicraft sector, could be in the beekeeping sector, could be in any sector. They would come and tell that this is what we want. And in the meantime, we had a group of other people who were making films, documentaries, about 10, 15 minute documentaries, showing them what can be done, what is the process we follow. So on the way, in a separate room, they were doing that. So people would come and flock into the CFCs, see what they talk to the young people there, see what can be done, go back and give it a thought, and then eventually, as we build up this uh, momentum of more and more big people came, we were able to attract foreign investment. The first came with the IFAC project, okay, which was the Meghalaya Livelihoods Access to Markets Program. That was the first uh, that was the first project that we had, Meghalaya Access to Markets Program. That was a progress that we had. That was in the pre uh, in the lamp, really, which we call the mega lamp. That was what brought. We took that about one thousand three hundred and fifty villages. We conducted this program. And that program has just is just is has been on the final stages now. We are ending this program, and we've had quite a bit of success in these villages. So, sir, in terms of impact, have you done any assessment to you know measure or to weigh in like how these uh, initiatives of yours have been benefiting the people and have been you know transforming Meghalaya as an economy and as a society? Uh, yes, yes, uh, you know. In, for, for example, the Megalam project, you know, if I can just look at this uh, record, it, we, it was a funding agency with the IFAD. It was a project of about 169 million US dollars. It covered 1,350 villages and it was a project period for five years, for, for eight years. We covered from uh, for eight years. And in this project, you know, we had uh, uh, created, we created integrated natural resource management in about you know, about uh, with, with an amount of about 10 lakh rupees per village, we covered this. All the 1,350 villages we covered this. And then, under the rural finance component of this project, we have created 300 integrated village cooperative societies. Now, these integrated village cooperative societies, over the years, as the progress, as the progress, as the project grew, they have transformed themselves into various uh, various components, developed their a number of products and have excelled in many ways. Now, through this, we have also built up an inclusive supply chain enterprise. You know, we have done that. And under this, you know, we have, it, 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 it has given us the opportunity, you know, to uh, improve the land productivity for various agri horti and allied activities. This, we have taken them up, they are directly taken up with the markets, building, them, building markets, bringing new products, created value chains, product, and, the list is unending. Over the last uh, eight years, which we have built the Megaland project, we have done a lot. Of, we have done a lot of strengthening of the 
financial services also to the farmers and the small businesses. Basically, we have helped to develop the farmer, the farmer development and enhance his access to the market. So, I mean, market-oriented, you know, uh, approaches have definitely, it seems like from what you're saying, have benefited the society at large in Meghalaya. So, any schemes that are close to your heart and or do you think they are, they have done wonderfully well, which can be, you know, emulated by others also in at least northeast, if not uh, in the plains. So, any, any particular schemes that you're really, you know, proud of and would like to share with us? Well, under, under the Basin program, <clears throat> under one of the pillars, besides being entrepreneurs, driven and all, one of the most important for us was governance, good governance. Now, in the state of Meghalaya, we always had a problem with getting land for any kind of development because we, in a peculiar condition, the people of Meghalaya own 95% of the land in the state. The government controls of only about 4 to 5% of the land. So whenever there is a question of needing land for any project, the first hurdle was, how do we get the land? And for this, the government of Meghalaya created the Meghalaya Institute of Governance as one of the pillars of this basin of the basin approach. Now, in this case, they made MIG, Meghalaya Institute of Governance, as the nodal agency to take up social impact assessment for all land acquisition in the state. Now, this I feel it was one of the most important ways by which we were able to easily gain access, get the confidence of the people, and get land for any project. Number two is, how do we build our relationship with the community members and the and the local chiefs, and the through the through the relationship that we have? Now, we started building leaders. We had programs called, you know, which was called. Uh, Ethics and governance. We start talking to people about this. This is these are basic things that grew up. Ethics and governance. We start talking about building field level leadership initiatives, building leaders, and we started doing all these programs in such a way by building capacity and making people confident about what the government is doing and how they can trust the government with the initiatives that we can do. By building this relationship, we were able to bring together all the different factions that are. The, in the governance mega system of Megala, bring them together and work together for good. If you look at this, and all our programs, basic, this is cross cutting across all our programs. It is with the communities. That's why all our programs are community based. And to get a community based, you have to have the people on your side. Once we have the people on our side, everything falls into place. So I think for other states, for other people everywhere, I think basically the governance mechanism should be transparent. The people should trust the government and the young people should come forward to become the leaders and help in giving a decision making. Both women and women, men and women, come forward, make help in making decisions so that whatever decision we made for their development, it is themselves who have made this. So there's a total ownership on the program that we do. Yes. So uh, in a nutshell, how would you describe MBDA's efforts uh, if we compare the pre-MBDA era and post-MBDA era? Ah, that, would, uh, that is a very interesting thing. If I can say, hmm, so uh, we, have, we have this thing in the, we had a program called, we had uh, something which is uh, pre, pre, uh, pre-MBDA, before MBDA and after MBDA. You know, there was uh, a pre-MBDA, we were all working in silos, as I have mentioned. There was uh, hardly any initiatives where people talked to each other. Different departments were working separately. So under so the government under the planning department, which was the uh, parent department for MBDA, we started uh, bringing convergence mode. We started talking to each other. Started by providing them the services that they that the services that we are giving. Now, and under the EAPs, you know, we so and pre, pre, uh, prior prior to this. We did not have anything on mission mode. So when when we started this uh, basin IBDP approach, so we started putting everything in mission mode. We had nine missions. So we started putting every everybody on mission mode. One, we had the apiculture mission. We had the aqua, aquaculture mission. Then we had horticulture mission, livestock. Then we had the sericulture, forestry, water, rural energy, 
tourism, mission green, and mission of So these were some, these were the missions that we had to take. Each mission started looking within to find out what was the real need for them to change so they would go. So over the number of years, these missions are going, and through these missions, a lot of a lot of growth has happened and various programs. Huh? So when we started building, so once this was built, we had our first investment in the, under the for, for this program. Then as more and more party came, then the World Bank came. World Bank came in with the community led landscape management project. Then we had now we have JICA a project, which we call Neck Life, is a community forestry project. Then now we have with the KFW Bank. Now we have with so many, then we had, uh, so then more and more investments came into the state because of, uh, they found that, yes, this is a very good model that is the people of Meghalaya are doing. The community is fully uh, involved in every decision making and it has given the people a lot of confidence and independence. While at the same time, the works, the decisions, the monitoring are all in a very transparent. Very heartening to hear all that, uh, sir. And uh, definitely you travel a lot of distance in terms of developing the uh, state. So what is the road ahead? Where do you see, uh, you know, MBDA taking Meghalaya uh, to a newer heights in the coming years? When we first started, you know, there was just a few of us. Just a few of us. We were taunted a lot because uh, of what we were trying to do. Now, after four externally aided projects in our city, working very hard, showing very good progress. And now we have a strength of about 900 young people working uh, with our MBDA in the various in the various organizations on the MBDA. Now, we have built, we have built a lot of uh, very capable manpower. We have opened the, we have broken the glass ceiling, so to say, of the kind of opportunities people now we have a program called Prime. Under Prime, a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs are coming. New projects, new products are being identified. Now, as new things are being uh, created. New markets are being uh, explored. We are having connections everywhere. Now, this uh, MBD on its own has been able to create a sort of a, a, a huge opening. It will be very difficult for me to pinpoint each and every because Everything has built on this platform. The young people who are here have grown so much that everybody is encouraged to bring in their own opportunity and their own ideas. Now, right, we talk right from integrated natural resource management, when we talk right from rural finance, then we talk from inclusive uh, supply chain, when we talk about uh, uh, a strengthening of uh, this uh, village community, then we are, now we have payment for ecosystem services, then we provide, we provide services for uh, uh, for GIS platforms, we have uh, drones. We have we have uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of activity, and we provide these services to any to all the government departments, institutions who are in need. Our job is we share this data with them. Previously, data was very difficult to get. Now we are here and we share this data, and we provide them that support and everything. So, in the long run, I see that programs such as this has a huge potential in uh, in attracting investments into the state. When people see that there's so much positivity in everything that we do. Now, foreign investors, Government of India schemes, uh, interested uh, business uh, houses are all looking into the area by which they want also to be a part of the growth that we have. So I see this as a growth potential that we have and which will continue to grow as much as the opportunities present about this. Now, the issue is how much of the natural resources are we going to bring about into this so that to ensure that this growth is sustainable and can last for many, many more generations. So it's very heartening to hear about all the achievements that MBD has been, been up to. So uh, I wish you all the best, sir, in your future endeavors also. And I'm sure under your able leadership, MBDA will uh, create uh, newer and higher milestones for the state. And we wish you all the best and all our best wishes are with you for, you know, this uh, path of journey that you are taking Meghalaya on. Thank you so much for joining us today.
All Thank you. And, uh, on behalf of the people of Meghalaya, we are very fortunate to have that, uh, you know, the elders of the state, right from the chief minister, to the chief secretary, the minister, the commissioner, and all the people who are at the helm of affairs of the state have shown in so much interest, have, uh, have had so much belief in uh, the MBDA that uh, we are able to uh, handle so many projects, so many activities which are within our ambit and that is also without, outside the ambit also. So we are very thankful and uh, we look forward that we will serve as a small flame of encouragement to others also who wish to tread into the same path that we have done. We have had a lot of difficulty, but now we are on the right track, we know. And uh, I'm thankful to you for giving us this opportunity to share the achievements of our organization. And we hope that we will be able to share with you again more in future. Thank you. Certainly, sir. We would love to you know, bring to the light all the good work being done in uh, Meghalaya. And uh, of course, credit goes to everyone, all the team members, including the top management, which is like chief minister onwards, uh, for doing their bit and you know uh, taking this forward with uh, able institutions like yours. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we wish uh, to see Meghalaya shining and sparkling in the days and years to come. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So this was Mr. Ayban Swe, bringing about a quiet revolution in the beautiful state of Meghalaya. The efforts being made in the region are much more than what we discussed here. We will try to update with all of those. Keep watching this space. Goodbye.